It is a packed house here in San Diego, California. Hello, everybody. Supercross at its best, coming to you from San Diego. Qualifying for the main is a necessity to get into the money. It's also important to get the earliest choice of gate positions. Top five for four riders from each of the two qualifying heats get to the transfer to the main, and then the rest of the field goes to the semifinals where the top five qualify. Only two more spots are available in the 20-rider gate, and that'll come from the last chance qualifier. Last week's Honda sweep was a result of rebuilding a team that was candidly embarrassed after a winless 97 campaign, and we looked into that effort. There's no better story for this week's Honda close-up than the team's return to prominence. Uh, we didn't know what, you know, what we could do at the, that first race, and going one, two, three, four, you know, was, I mean, we, everybody dreamed about that. You know, I was dreaming about this uh, the day before the race. Even the veterans can't remember when Honda scored a one, two, three, four to Supercross. What a Herculean way to start the season, especially after the humiliating winless campaign of 97, and pretty much a one-man show with four wins in 98. That's what racing is. I mean, that's that's the drug that we live for, is is to win. Everybody wants to do the same thing. This was a turnaround matched only by the Atlanta Falcons rags to riches story over the last three years. The sudden loss of Jeremy McGrath and a new bike that wasn't race proven threw the winningest factory team into a near panic state. Well, I think it was panic initially when we lost McGrath. I think the humiliation of uh, doing going from the top to the bottom. Uh, we all shuddered a little bit. The leader of this Red Rider revolution, as Lusk, is in his second year with the team. It was a good place to create a new base, but rebuilding meant reevaluation and changing philosophy. You can't, you can't rely on one individual. We, re we relied on Jeremy McGrath for too long, and uh, you put all your eggs in one basket. It may work for a little while, but over the long haul, it's definitely not the right thing to do. Former three-time champion Jeff Stanton proved as good a recruiter as Jerry Maguire. Sebastian, we knew he wanted to come over here and race in, in America. And um, we took advantage of that, talked to him, worked it out with him. The Kevin Wyndham situation, he wasn't happy where he was at. Um, I contacted him halfway through the year, and then he, he got back with us. And then Mikel Pichon, um, all he wanted to do was ride a Honda. Cliff White called on his 21 years of experience with Honda to convince the money men that it wasn't only how much to spend, but where to spend it. Honda was leaving no stone unturned, coughing up the bucks for Mike Morocco's Factory Connection independent team. It's paid off. Honda stepped up 99 for me with uh, a lot more support, and I mean, I feel the bikes are so much better this year. I just, it's just everything's easier. It's a long season, but if this Honda team stays healthy, it's every rider for himself when a championship is on the line. All of these kids have egos. That's what drives them to win. You just have to be a mediator and try to keep a lid on it if you can and not let it get out of hand. A good problem to have, and that's this week's Honda Profile. Getting set for heat number one of our qualifying round, Mikel Pichon, he took second in the opener, number five, Mike LaRocco. He's in the field with Ricky Carmichael, Jeremy McGrath, David Huffman, Timmy Ferry, Jimmy Button, Phil Lawrence, Larry Ward, Robbie Raynard. What a packed field, David Bailey. This, again, just like Anaheim, these heat races look more and more like a main event. It's an awesome year for talent. You go all the way down the starting line, and there's a lot of riders out here that can make it out of this heat race with a win. A lot of guys are going to have to go to the semi. It's inevitable every week. Our first qualifying round is underway. A good start on the inside. Number 17, Robbie Raynard. Ricky Carmichael in the middle. Number nine squeezes out Jimmy Button. And it's Robbie Raynor, number 17, oh. Team Suzuki. McGrath almost got collected in a crash just behind these guys. LaRocco was involved in that. So was Larry Ward. Ward is looks like he's hurt there. So Larry Ward, number seven, is not getting up very quickly. After that crash, AMA officials on the scene. I just caught the tail end of that. Looked like he got drilled into the ground. They were all going for the inside. It wasn't enough room. And again, Raynard playing it smart in the first corner. Out front, Robbie Raynard with Ricky Carmichael in second place. Starting to put some pressure on. Jimmy Button on the fourth stroke in third with Jeremy McGrath in fourth. This is interesting. Now you got the two 125 hot shots moving up, taking the first two spots. The big four stroke and then McGrath, the veteran behind him. 
not a Honda in sight. These two used to be teammates with uh, Team Chaparral. Jimmy Button, of course, leaving to take over the four-stroke for Team Yamaha. And Jeremy McGrath anxious for another title. Beautiful shot of how much air these guys are getting over the triple. It seems like the face of that one is a lot steeper than what they were at Anaheim. These guys are going really high. McGrath making the pass. Jeremy McGrath now in third place with Ricky Carmichael in front of him. See how tight McGrath cut that corner just to be sure that he didn't leave any room for Jimmy Button to come in there and shut the door. Did the same thing again right there. Brainerd now starting to pull a lead on Ricky Carmichael. It's Jeremy McGrath with Jimmy Button on his tail. That's what I like about McGrath. He's got so much experience and the ability to protect his line but, but not lose time in riding defensive. The top four qualify for the main event. It is a long way back to fifth position where we have a battle between Damon Huffman and Mikel Pichon. It's interesting to note that Pichon and LaRocco are not in qualifying position right now. They got a long ways to go to make it up. The front four just opened up a huge lead right now. We'll take our qualifying heat to conclusion when we return to Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. Discover the amazing hitting secrets of America's finest baseball school in Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing 2. Tommy Mansky's powerful teaching video that features the same revolutionary techniques that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches have been simply amazed at their students' rapid week-by-week -week improvement. These award-winning techniques benefit players of all ages and ability levels and make a valuable addition to any coach's library and a great gift. At just $29.95, call now. Shh. Everybody, get ready. Okay. There's me, and there's my 4x4. Four four. I'm picking up some speed. Here I go, up. Woo! Look at me move! And I look great doing it! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> look out, everybody. Here comes the coma man. You're the bomb, baby, the bomb! The man... Eh. So, what do you think? I am everyday people. A crowd of two-wheeled enthusiasts gathers at the Honda factory in Marysville, Ohio. Today, we are proud to introduce to you the Honda Shadow Aero. The bike's a real hit with the crowd. The Aero sports the latest in streamlined design with an exhaust pipe right out of the pages of science fiction. Here's Miss Aero showing off the bike's dazzling colors. The Honda Aero is available today, and what's the verdict in Marysville? There you have it, and it's full speed ahead for the bike of tomorrow. Hey Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs, and the financing to get them. And by Honda, maker of the world's most powerful custom motorcycle, the Valkyrie. Back to the queue in San Diego, our first qualifying heat of Supercross action with five laps to go. It's Ricky. It's Robbie Raynard in the lead with Ricky Carmichael right behind him. We might have a great battle here at the end of this qualifying round, David. Well, I think what's going to force it to be that is the fact that Ricky's so aggressive, trying for a move right there, and McGrath's behind them both. They can feel that pressure, and that's going to force these guys to get aggressive. Look at that. Ricky Carmichael leaps into first place and has the edge on the corner. Will this be Ricky's night? Robbie Rayner trying to fire right back into the action. That was smart. Ricky jumping, crossing the bike up in the air to protect that inside line. Didn't leave an inch for Rayner to come in there and steal it. Look how close McGrath is already. McGrath hugging up on Robbie Rayner in third position with Jimmy Button in fourth. It would be those four that qualify. But boy, what back and forth action we've had with the top four. You see this rut right here. That's going to get deeper as the night goes on. In the practice, they were getting that down into the foot pegs.
Brady complaining of problems with the shock, the suspension in the opener. And he and Larry Ward really had a tough time of it. Look at this. Jeremy McGrath tries to the inside. McGrath, Greenard by the bar. Carmichael in first, Jeremy in second. Boy, McGrath stayed quite a bit lower off that triple, too. Just looked over like, well, this, this is how I've did it. Done it for the last five years. Each of those years, I won a, a Supercross championship. And I'm, I'm surprised that Rayner didn't learn from when Carmichael passed him. McGrath watched it all from the back seat, went in there, did the exact same thing, and I'm surprised that uh, Rayner didn't move over and shut the door on it. Less than three ride laps to go. This is going to be interesting. The new kid on the block and the winningest, most successful Supercross rider of all time out in front of these guys right now, battling Jimmy out. Button. Jimmy Button taking advantage of Robbie Rayner now, but Rayner still holding on to that fourth spot. He's got a big lead on Mikel Pichon. Now Rayner goes to the inside, just behind Button there. Realizes he's going to have to cover that. Might as well get some practice in. Get comfortable with that. Sometimes you get comfortable with the line, you get past, and you just, it's hard to move over because you're not used to taking that inside. The four stroke in third. I think what's happening to Raynard right now, because he was riding so good in the beginning, I think maybe he got out there, felt a little bit of pressure, and his arms are pumping up. A lot of these guys get tight in the heat races, and that's what he and Ward both complained about in Anaheim was arm pump. They took some of their test bike components and brought them to the races right now in hopes the Team Suzuki could show better. Ricky Carmichael is our leader. He felt he should have been more aggressive last week in his 250 debut, David. Well, it's his first race. I don't, I don't think he can look back and, I mean, uh, <laughs> he's got points, you know, right now. And if he'd have been a little bit more aggressive and gone down, that's what happened to McGrath. He got too aggressive, went down, and ended up finishing behind Ricky. So here they are in the same position again. Carmichael realizing he doesn't have the dominance he had in the 125s when he had that unprecedented sweep last year in 125 action. And the white flag is out. And Ricky Carmichael is one lap away from winning his first qualifying heat in the 250s. This is big, Art. And the reason I'm thinking that is because all day yesterday and all day today in practice, Jeremy has been the guy. He has been the guy setting the pace, jumping everything first, having the fastest lap times. And here, Carmichael is going to win his first heat race. Can he, should he hold on to it and upset him? Psychological factor here? Oh, huge. Huge. Carmichael didn't ride quite this good in the heat race last week. Ended up third going to the main event, but it was a start. This is a, a big step because he had pressure from, from McGrath, and he's actually pulled away now. That was Chad Watts, Ricky's mechanic looking on. And he's going to be upside down on this finish line jump. The checkers for Carmichael. Ricky Carmichael. And McGrath, one and two out of our opening qualifying heat. Jimmy Button and Robbie Raynard also getting the transfer. Davey Coombs catches up with our winner on the podium in just a moment. Now, the ultimate in extreme crash action has twice the excitement in this exclusive new two-video set, Awesome, awesome crashes, crashes and Motorcycle Madness. madness. This action-packed set features some of the most awesome and devastating crashes you've ever seen. From the outlaw and sprint cars to super bikes and power boats, Awesome Crashes is just what the name says, awesome. And if you want motorcycle crashes, look no further. Motorcycle Madness has bone-chilling two-wheel crashes that'll make your spine tingle. You get both action-packed crash videos for the incredible price of only $19.95. But if you order within the next 30 minutes, we'll include eat the absolutely free. It's just what the name says. Right now, are you thinking, A, I like her quick thinking, B, I like her courage under pressure, or C, I'd like to give her a sponge bath. If you answered C, then you're ready for Macho Macho Movies on FX. Get your fill of mayhem and mini dresses with a Pamela Anderson double feature. Macho Macho Movies, tonight on FX. Raw Justice at 9, followed by Snapdragon. He wants a Pathfinder, but he's been through a bankruptcy. Tony wants a Maxima, but he has a history of slow payments. Michelle wants a Mazda, but she's a first-time buyer. Guess what? They can all buy their dream cars, and so can you. 
Regardless of your credit history, call Rosenthal Nissan Mazda at 1-800-471-1CAR. Ask for Kevin Woodall or Rondu Arnold, and they will put you in a new or previously owned car of your dreams. Call 1-800-471-1CAR right away. Michael in a very significant victory, his first qualifying win on the 250s. Jeremy McGrath in second, Jimmy Button on the fourth stroke in third, Robbie Raynard in fourth. And those guys will go to the main event. Not making it, the second place finisher in our opening round, Pashone, and the third place finisher, Mike LaRocco, along with Huffman, Lawrence, and Ward. As the bikes start revving up now for our second qualifying heat, David Bailey. Big whoop section here in San Diego. A lot more options for passing, maybe. And also to start things off, we've got a long starting line. It's about 100 yards right there into this tight left. I have a feeling we're going to see some trouble there. Guys not being able to get stopped for that. And the guy that tucks around the inside will come out smelling like a rose. First triple over here on the right side of the track. This is an interesting section through here. A lot of different options. We've already seen a couple of passes there for the lead. And this is the whoop section you talked about through here. It's the toughest whoop section we've seen. Of course, it's only the second round, but that's going to be giving guys fits tonight, especially as that rut gets worse and they start veering to the outsides. Jeff Emig is in this second qualifying heat. He came into the season rededicating himself after a bummer of a 98 year. St. Louis, April of 96, Jeff Emig had an exclusive. He would become the only rider that season to defeat Jeremy McGrath in Supercross. Amongst all his previous wins and honors, this day would be the single biggest springboard to success. I worked really hard all that year. I'd been super close again that, that year probably five times. I finally got that one. I'm telling you what, man, that was, that was the best feeling I'd ever had up to that time. A streak breaker carried the confidence of that win into what would become the year of his racing career to date. 1997, Emig would win his first 250 Supercross crown, once again breaking a McGrath string of unprecedented achievement. He would take his second consecutive 250 National Motocross title, not to mention the FIM World Supercross Series crown. Everything he touched turned to gold and glory. I, I raced as many races as I could in 97, you know, World Supercross Championship, all that stuff. I mean, I did every race I possibly could. I go to every race. I mean, I wasn't even having time to train anymore. Many say it's easier getting to the top than staying there for the guy they call Jeff Rowe. 1998 proved near disastrous. My downfall in 98, it didn't even, it, it didn't start in 98. I think it started, you know, later on in, in, in 97. That's the one that uh, won the 250 motocross championship. I didn't do nothing all week. I mean, we played golf. It was out late every night, bar none. You know, this Seattle Supercross in 98 was the worst race of my career. Started second, finished 14. Complete mental just disaster. It was no secret that I was having a lot of problems, a lot of, a lot of confidence problems going through the whoop sections. I had that, I had that big crash in the whoops at, at, uh, at uh, New Orleans. It was highly televised. I appreciate the TV guys. You guys doing a good job getting that shot. Great to see it on all of the little highlight reels, too. With such a sudden slide, rumors were flying over the internet. The one rumor Emig says was not true. By no means was, you know, was drugs or anything like that. It wasn't, wasn't a drug problem, like I said. It was a fro problem. Mechanical failures and injury kicked him while he was down. But before submitting to surgery, with only two nationals left on the season, Jeff Emig showed us he still had what it takes. Eight wins in ten motos. Four national overalls in five races. Man, it's good when it's good, though. I'm telling you, I went to those races in Unadilla. I'm scoring one ones again, and and uh, I mean, even the even the race I broke my thumb. I mean, it's like so out of start, first, fifth, don't matter. I'm gonna win. Going into this season, Jeff Rowe knows the window of opportunity is a small one. I mean, I wake up in the morning, and go, man. I, I mean, things are good. Things are gonna be good again next year, and uh, I mean, they are. I just, I really. I, th I think that it's 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 uh, the frame of mind that I'm in, and knowing the everyday choices that I make, the little choices, that it's like, well, I'm kind of tired, but then I make the choice. Okay, you know, well, I'll go to the gym anyway. Well, I, you know, that makes me happy. That makes, you know, that makes me feel good that I made the right choice. Whoa! Emmy goes down. Kevin Windham's involved. Oh, what bad luck! So far in 99, Emig's troubles have resurfaced, this crash resulting in an LCQ appearance to make the field in the season's opener. Can he recover tonight? 32nd board is up. Ezra Lusk, last week's winner, is in this heat, along with Kevin Windham. 
John Dowd. We mentioned Emig. Steve Lampson now with Chaparral. Brock Sellers, a 125 Eastern rider. David Villeman, Greg Albertine, Sebastian Tortelli. Some big names. Even a veteran from the past who won a long time ago in San Jose, Dr. Doug Dubai. We're just about set now for the gate to drop here in our second qualifying heat. And they're underway. Number four, Ezra Lusk is the point man with number 14, Wyndham right behind him and John Dowd to his left. It is Ezra Lusk, John Dowd, Albertine fighting it out for third with Wyndham. Wyndham edges ahead. Oh, they almost crunched there on the burn, David Bailey. It's tight quarters with that many good guys up front battling. A couple of Honda teammates. Wyndham sort of got pushed wide, but he did a nice job to recover, get back up into second. And for Lusk to turn around and see a teammate, this is Anaheim all over again. It always helps when you see your teammate back there. You can relax a little bit because you know he's not going to come in there and knock you down. Ezra Lusk, such a confident rider this year, his second year with Team Honda after being three seasons with three different factories. But Wyndham, will he let him get away with it this time in the qualifying heat? Wyndham in second place. Wants to make a move. Albertine in third with Dowd in fourth. And it's Sebastian Tortelli in fifth on the bubble for the transfer spot. Emmy clashes moving into fifth. Well, I don't think what you're going to see here, you're not going to, there's no secrets. These guys are teammates. If Lusk does something that's a little bit new out there, chances are they've talked it over in the pits. Wyndham won't be surprised. He'll probably just work on it, make sure he can do it too. Come main event time, he'll be ready. Here's the battle for second and third as Wyndham trailing our leader Ezra Lusk. Really impressed with the way Wyndham got through this roof section in practice, but unfortunately right now they're getting a one-line situation right down the middle. Hopefully that gets chopped up and they start moving to the outside. Look Here comes Wyndham to the inside, David. Beautiful clean pass on the berm. What happens, you get so focused on the whoop section, you forget to get through that corner smart at the end. That's wide open. It reminds me of Phoenix last year where they had a couple of wide open corners up near the finish line. That's where Jeremy and Lust did a lot of banging. A great back and forth battle for first place, but also I foresee some action on the bubble situation in this particular heat as we've got Wyndham in first, Lusk in second, Albertine has held third nicely, but John Dowd, Sebastian Tortelli, and now Jeff Emmy getting into the battle for the final transfer spot. Ali Seymour, Kevin Wyndham's mechanic, looking on anxiously. I think he was uh, feeling a little bit better about Kevin's chances tonight because he was a little shook up after going down the heat race with Emig at Anaheim, and he, he rode a little bit wounded the rest of the race, just played things smart. Here he felt a lot more relaxed, a little bit more confidence on his face today. Our 25th anniversary celebration of Pace Supercross continues in a moment. as comfortable as the Suzuki Intruder 1500LC. A bike so smooth, so impressive, you'll want the end of the ride to be just the beginning. Do you need a Visa credit card? If you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. This is a special opportunity to get an unsecured Visa credit card with no security deposit required, even if you've been turned down before and regardless of your past credit history. Almost everyone will be approved for this Visa credit card, so call now. Repeat, if you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. Say yes to this limited no-risk offer for an unsecured Visa credit card from Cross Country Bank. Call this toll-free number now. January 24th, he was a star quarterback until his wife took over his body. Now the New Orleans Saints he ran right into me. will learn a whole new way to play ball. Positive thoughts, people. A saintly switch. ABC Sunday, January 24th. A great tradition reborn on ESPN2, Friday Night Fights. This week live from Foxwoods Casino, Rosenblatt takes on Davis. Plus, part four of the Mike Tyson retrospective. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9 on ESPN2. Let's take a look back to 1986. It was a muddy evening at Jack Murphy Stadium as the O Show. Number three, Johnny O'Mara grabbed the early lead over number five, Rick Johnson on the right, and Team Yamaha's number nine, Keith Bowen. 
Local favorite Ron Lachine dumped his Kawasaki in the quagmire, along with any chances for victory. Out in front, Johnson stepped it up in the turn, passing O'Mara for the lead. And with Jeff Ward in tow, he lengthened that lead through the whoops. O'Mara had trouble in the deep ruts. Wardy, the defending champion that year, was able to pass him, moving into second place. Brock Glover, after a bad start, got stuck in the pack, unable to challenge for a top five position. Then it was Bowen overtaking the fledgling O'Mara to move into third. In the end, El Cajon's number five, Rick Johnson, was able to hold on to take the win in front of his hometown fans. We're back with Supercross, heat number two of our qualifying action from San Diego. After winning the opener, Ricky Carmichael, we're taking a look now at Kevin Windham, leading our second qualifying heat with Ezra Lesk, last week's winner, in second place. Kevin's starting to make a few mistakes right now. In the corner before the triple back there, he stepped the front wheel high up in the berm, knocked the hay bale up off the top. There you see teammates riding together. That's about as aggressive as they're going to get until you get to the last couple laps of the main. Just trying to cut underneath, make it clean. After Kevin made the mistake at the top of the berm, front end almost went over the top. Then he came up short on the triple, and Lust is back there watching that going, well, he, he's mine now. He's starting to make mistakes. Wyndham and Lust have pulled away from third, fourth, and fifth, where a real battle is ensuing. Here comes to the inside, Ezra Lust. It was pressure from Lust that, that forced Kevin into another mistake. And the guys say, oh, the track's kind of easy. Everyone's doing the same thing. It's hard to pass. Well, we just saw that you can get by people out there if you keep the pressure on and make good decisions. Ezra Lust with four Supercross wins last year. Only injuries held him out of title contention in making a charge on Jeremy McGrath. There you see the whoop section. Look at that. Albertine in third. And number six is uh, John Dowd with Sebastian Tortelli and then Jeff Emig. Emig hopping through those whoops a lot better than last week. Well, he, he know, he's desperate right now. He knows he needs to get back up there where he belongs, not have to spend too much time going to the semi this year like last year. Albertine tried to hold on to third. He had a third-place finish in the semis in the first week of action and got a slow start. In the main event, ending up in 16th place. But he's looking much better right now. Sometimes all you need is a start to get up there and run with the fast guys, watch what they're doing, and you get in their groove. And that's what happened for Albertine in the early laps. Right now, though, he's lost so much time to the leaders. I don't know if he gets a good look at him. He's going to start feeling the pressure in these last few laps. I know Emig's going to turn it up in, in desperation, so is Tortelli. That's going to put the pressure on Dowd, and number eight right there, Albertine's going to feel it all. So we have less than three laps to go as the leaders now jumping over the finish line jump. Albertine just clearing it. When will Sebastian Tortelli make his move? Sebastian Tortelli, a winner in the opener last year at the Los Angeles Coliseum, still is recovering from the broken foot that he received in some action after winning the 250 crown over in Europe last year, beating Stefan Everts out in the last race of the year. And they're starting to spread out now. No, no real challenge for no, third, fourth, I thought, and fifth. Actually, I thought this would turn out to be a great battle. And Emig just took a new line just behind these guys. He just tripled into the corner, made up some time. There you see Emig at the tail end of this, then Lampson, and then uh, Villeman bringing up the rear of that long freight train battle. These guys better get busy or they're going to the semi. It's more work for them, more wear and tear on the bike for the mechanics. Last lap, white flag is out. And it looks pretty cut and dried right now, unless a mistake is made. Ezra Lusk is our leader, and he's pulling away from Kevin Windham in second place. A long way back to Albertine. John Dowd and Sebastian Tortelli, Jeff Emmy, then Steve Lampson, and then David Villeman. Only the top four advance directly to the main event. The others go to the semifinal round. Lusk having time to acknowledge the crowd. Boy, that's a big lead Lusk has now. Almost the entire whoop section steals a glance. Knows he's got it all made. 
And the checkered flag waving for Ezra Lusk. He continues his rampage in leading the Red Rider Revolution. And Kevin Windham is right behind him. We'll be right back listening to our winner, Ezra Lusk, after these words. It's the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. The art of tennis, as played by the masters. Tennis on ESPN2. Eight riders have now qualified after the four making it to the main event of our second qualifying heat. Lusk, Wyndham, Albie, and John Dowd. Let's go down to Davey Coombs now with our winner. Well, it just keeps rolling for Ezra Lusk. Ezra, carried over from Anaheim, your heat race, convincing ride, you got the win. How do you feel about the main event? Uh, Davey, I feel really good, you know. I came into this race a little bit nervous coming off that win, and, man, I really didn't want to do that the first race out, but I felt good. You know, I came out of that gate kind of not really that good, but my bike just hooked up, and I caught gears, and I got the whole shot, and, uh, you know, things are working really well. What do you think about your riding partner from down the southeast, Ricky Carmichael, also winning a heat race? I saw you guys in practice pulling around. You were doing tricks for each other off the big jumps. Yeah, Ricky's seen a few of my tricks, and uh, it's kind of fun because I know the guy really good, and it's going to be good if we get out and race against each other like him and Jeremy did. You know, it'll be a, a really good show for the fans because I think we kind of know a lot of what we're going to do, so it'll be a back-and-forth race. All right, good job, Yogi. Good luck in the main. Thanks. I want to thank Honda and all the guys that got me here. Ezra Lusk, our winner of the second qualifying heat. From San Diego, we head to Phoenix, Arizona for round number three. The 99 schedule then takes us up to Seattle and back to Anaheim before heading south to Tampa, Atlanta, Texas Stadium, all on that schedule. Then we are part of Bike Week in Daytona and make the stop at the Astrodome after Daytona. Midwest swing then, Minneapolis, St. Louis, and Pontiac, then to the Louisiana Superdome and Indianapolis before the finale in Las Vegas. But we'll be back with more Supercross action from San Diego in just a moment. Are as comfortable as the Suzuki Intruder 1500 LC. A bike so smooth, so impressive, you'll want the end of the ride to be just the beginning. Everybody I know calls her the cow, even people I don't know. Oh! I threw a parade for the cow because it definitely needed something to honor this moment. It's really saying something to think that we went through 15 New England winters. Yay! It's just an amazing vehicle. It's been a, a really good buddy. It's been a good friend. And heck, we just need another excuse for a party. Toyota trucks. How many miles can you put on? Have you outgrown your current position or find yourself unemployed? Then it's time to look in the National Business Employment Weekly. You'll find top jobs with top companies and advice on landing them. Order six issues of the National Business Employment Weekly now for only $19, a special introductory offer. Look in the National Business Employment Weekly. You'll never know what you'll find. To subscribe, call 800-238-3800. That's 800-238-3800. Hey. 
I never want to see you again. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? Aren't you bummed? She took my favorite jersey. This week's Honda Flashback takes us back to 1989. Mike Fisher took the whole shot. Meanwhile, back in the pack, rookie sensation number 45, Damon Bradshaw, and the veteran rider Rick Johnson battled it out. The leader, Fisher, then took a nasty tumble that would make every home video of the year. He would bounce back unscathed, but lose his first place spot to the hard-charging Jeff Stanton. The rookie veteran battle continued to rage on, with Johnson getting the best of Bradshaw with a well-executed block pass. Then Johnson locked his sights on teammate Stanton as the two hometown boys raced for the checkers. After Johnson railed it on the outside, passing Stanton for the lead, he would hold on for an impressive comeback victory his fourth in a row. Back in San Diego, California, for round two of Pace Supercross. Art Ekman along with David Bailey. And David, if uh, the heat racing is any indication, we are going to have a tremendous, tremendous main event. First of all, you've got Ricky Carmichael and Jeremy McGrath battling it out in the first qualifying heat. Then you have the two Honda teammates, Lusk and Wyndham, doing the same thing in the heat, too. Well, Jeremy had to come from behind a little bit. And uh, once he got up behind Carmichael, I thought, well, this is going to be good. And uh, Carmichael just pulled away. I, I think Jeremy, it could have been a strategy where he's going, I don't want to show him where I'm faster because he's going to know that in the main event. That could have been by design. Uh, in the other heat, though, those guys just showed each other everything. The teammates, nothing's a secret anyway, but Lusk really was uh, proved to be the faster of the two, uh, he and Kevin. Kevin, I think, rode tight. He made a lot of mistakes, and then he just kind of said, go ahead, you, you can have it. <laughs> David, I have a feeling that every week we're going to have big names going to the semis, and even the last chance qualifiers happened uh, last week. But we've got two guys that hit the podium in Anaheim that have to go to the semifinals. Well, it's unfortunate. You know, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Emig is struggling again, and, and uh, you know, Larry Ward and his crash. It's, it's unfortunate, but as much talent as there is these days, there's going to be a lot of guys going to the semis and occasionally to the last chance qualifier. Let's go down to track side to Davey Coombs now and maybe a condition report on Larry Ward, Davey? Well, we tried to talk to Larry as he walked off. He was holding his shoulder. He didn't look very happy. Unfortunately, he also didn't give me any indication whether he was going to ride or not. It doesn't look good for Team Suzuki. At least the other two guys, Albertine and Raynard, qualified directly. Also, you got to be wondering what's going through Bruce Sernstrom's mind. The Kawasaki team manager, again, has two veterans going one of the heat races well as rookie Ricky Carmichael went straight in with the confidence the rock on Pichon got in their opening week uh, I expect them to fire back in the semifinals but boy that's got to be a testy situation for Emig and Huffman it is but uh, last week I mean it seems like they'd be used to it now I mean Emig did that a lot last year and and uh, it I think that Anaheim proved it doesn't really matter if you have to go to the semi Pichon went to the semi so did Kevin Windham. They both ended up, you know, second and fourth, respectively. So it's not that big of a deal. Last chance yeah. is a little bit scarier, though. Well, in here, we've got a longer start, too, and uh, the gate position isn't quite as essential. Uh, you know, I watched Emmett come out over the gate in the heat race, and he's been so phenomenal with starts over the years. He got out, looked like it was pretty good, and a lot of red soaked him up and, and beat him to the corner. So that could be a problem. He might have to go for a little bit different engine setting to beat those guys to the corner on these long starting lines. Semi-final action coming up when we return. In the mood for golf? All About Golf is your one-stop shop for the latest in high-tech indoor virtual reality golf simulators. Play 18 holes on over 60 championship courses such as Augusta, Pebble Beach, and TPC Scottsdale. You can even play on the moon. All About Golf is now forming corporate and private leagues for all skill levels. We also have a full-service pro shop. Private and group lessons available from our certified golf instructors. All About Golf in the Sterling Town Center Plaza. Skate, everything you need to hit the slopes or the pavement. 
NHL All-Star Saturday, where North America takes on the rest of the world in six events testing superior coordination, raw speed, sheer power, lightning wrists, perfect timing, and deadly accuracy. Find out what makes a great hockey player special. Join ESPN for the NHL Super Skills Competition, plus the heroes of hockey get it on for old time's sake on NHL All-Star Saturday, this Saturday at 7 on ESPN. The year was 1990. 125 West Coast champion Jeff Chicken Matasevich gets the best of his rival, 125 East Coast champ Damon Bradshaw. But Bradshaw takes it back again. What a rivalry this became. The two would vie for the lead in this race until Bradshaw loses control on a step up jump. The young rider would break his ankle in the tumble, dashing his championship hopes after trying for three consecutive Supercross victories. Trouble continued as second place Jeff Ward tossed his bike into a hay bale. Matasevich continued to lead until Jeff Stanton came on strong to make the pass. Stanton won the battle and the war, later taking his second AMA 250 Supercross Championship as an exasperated Bradshaw watched his season crumble. Welcome back to San Diego. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davy Combs from the queue in San Diego as they've now identified it. We see Mikel Pichon getting ready for our first semifinal rally. Let's go down to Davy uh, for a track report. Davy, is it still as rocky as it was at the beginning? You know what, Art? It might actually be rockier. The People Pace Motorsports decided this year, after so much mud at San Diego and the L.A. race, to lay down shirt like a bottom base. Well, here's what happens. It didn't rain this time. They gambled on it. They set all this rock down here. Look at this gravel. That's got to be the toughest roost in a Supercross. Well, it looks like David Bailey, you add a little water to it. It's nothing but cement. Well, the problem with that is if you get behind, that's like just standing in front of a pitching machine, maybe even a little worse, and all that stuff's coming at you off everyone's rear tires. These guys are going to have to go to the chest protectors. There you see Damon Huffman wearing one on the outside of the jersey. But most of these guys, of course, you just see their jersey, but what you don't see is the thin layer they have underneath just to protect them from that roof. Damon Huffman taking a deep breath at the starting line. Larry Ward is back up on the bike. That's good to see. The way he hobbled off after the heat race, I didn't think he was coming back. Little tire track on the back there. I think that's just the design of his jersey. <laughs> Probably wanted to get that jersey off of him and just out of his sight. Start fresh. Mikel Pichon, Damon Huffman, Phil Lawrence, Heath Voss, Mike LaRocco, Takeshi Koikita, Japanese champion, Ryan Terlicki, Bovoni, Campbell, Woolsey, Smale, Tim Ferry, the top privateer in the first week of action in Anaheim, all trying to qualify here in the first semifinal round. Number seven leads the pack, and that's Larry Ward. Ward trying to fight right back into it, and Damon Huffman, now 31, takes the lead. And Damon Huffman of Team Kawasaki and joining us here in the booth. Boy, I miss him already. His emotional style of riding on the edge. Ryan Hughes is on his way to Europe pretty soon to uh, participate in the GP series uh, all over the world. And Ryan, you're taking a look at one of your ex-teammates down there, Damon Huffman. They're having a hard time really getting that things together. Damon's a real good rider. He's got a lot of talent. And uh, I, think this year, I think this year he's going to... You know, he's going to do pretty good. You know, I think he's uh, got a good uh, training base going. He's had enough time for some broken leg. And, uh, you know, it should be a good year for him. Right now, Damon looks domineering as Larry Ward shook off the bad accident in the opening heat. All right, you know what I think happened? And this is the corner right here after the first turn. Larry Ward just went completely to the outside and just gave him the lead. That's where Larry got hammered in the heat race. And he went through there real shy. So it's Huffman, Ward, Tim Ferry, Mikel Pichon in that order. There. Huffman's going to get the signal. Get in the zone. Get a little bit more aggressive. I think he's in Anaheim. He might have been a little bit too careful. I want to get him fired up. I think somebody needs to make him mad at the starting line. When Damon gets mad or he has to come from pretty far behind, when he starts riding his best. Ryan, you get a pretty good idea what the tracks are going to be like over in Europe? Yeah, I know they're going to be really fast. You know, I've been uh, doing a lot of t uh, some testing on the bikes, and, uh, you know, going, sometimes I go a little faster than I want to, but you know, I know the tracks are pretty fast over there, and 
But, you know, I think my style kind of favors the outdoor series. So, you know, I think I'm going to do uh, pretty good over there next year. Five more riders will qualify here in our second semifinal round. As Pace Supercross 99 continues when we return. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Beauty. Adventure, drama, all these and more can be yours in the wonderful world of art. And with this free art test from Art Instruction Schools, you can find out if you have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. To get your free art test without cost or obligation, call this toll-free number. Don't delay. Call this toll-free number now. Call 1-800-344-8300. My dad won a lawnmower. Yeah, but my dad won a karaoke contest. My dad won a ham. My dad won an SP. Most outrageous play of the year, 1996. Field goal jumper. The 1999 ESPY Awards, live February 15th, 7.30 p.m., hosted by Samuel L. Jackson, the greatest night in sports. Sponsored by Pennzoil and General Motors. Don't touch it! Welcome back to our first semifinal round of 250 action from San Diego. It's Damon Huffman out in front, Larry Ward in second, and then Tim Ferry, number 20, on the no lean Yamaha in third. But a big challenge coming up now from Mikel Pichon, number five from Team Yamaha. I think he's the fastest rider on the track right now, Art, and we're going to find out if you can pass out here. Mikel Pichon of Team Honda. You know, he told us earlier that it was only a dream that Team Honda could have such a sweep in that first round. Everybody was a little bit nervous at Honda. You know, we didn't know what to expect at the, fir expect at the first race. And, uh, you know, everybody knows Jeremy is very, is very fast, and he won so many times at Hanaheim. And, uh, and uh, we didn't know what, you know, what we could do at the, that first race. And going one, two, three, four, you know, was, I mean, we, everybody dream about that. You know, I was dreaming about this uh, the day before the race, uh, that we all, we all would go, uh, one, two, three, even five, you know, with uh, with Sebastian. And uh, we didn't go off on to fifth, but we got four full riders in front, and uh, that was the best we could do. Dan Bentley, Pashon's mechanic. He looks like fairly concerned. David Huffman out in front, Ward in second, Ferry in third, Pashon in fourth. And the final qualifying position, Phil Lawrence is in fifth, but right behind him is Mike LaRocco. You'll see him take the turn right there. That's Pashone. Lawrence is 37. Mike LaRocco behind him. I think the concern on Dan Bentley's face, the mechanic for Pashone, is that I don't think gate position is as important as it is at some races, but still you want your rider to go into the main event with a little bit more confidence than fourth place out of the semi. Also, it's going to give him a pretty lousy pick to the starting line for the main event. And they're running out of time for him to move up. Less than a couple of laps remaining here in our semifinal round. There's Dan, the former mechanic of Jeff Stanton. Who can forget that year in 1990 when Stanton won the championship? Bentley cracking the board over his knee, slamming it down. Tim Ferry, number 20. Ferry's made a lot of progress, David. I'm impressed. At, the, at Anaheim last week, I was watching this guy, number 20, going, boy, he sure looks good. And I'm looking through the program going, who the heck is number 20 this year? And actually surprised a little bit to see that it was Ferry. I knew he could ride well, but really surprised me. White flag lap underway now as Huffman comes over the finish line jump. Here's Pashone making that same jump. Lawrence is behind him. The battle is Lawrence and LaRocco for the final qualifying position. Oh, Ferry. Ferry went down in the corner. Came up a little bit short on that double jump. Back in, caught it, and just spun right out from underneath him. So he'll have to probably go to the last chance qualifier. As LaRocco has his way paved. Both those guys in the lead getting over the triple now. Everyone's starting to get over it clean. 
Right, I like your attitude, though, in, t in approaching this opportunity you have in Europe. You just take it by the, the bull by the horns and run with it. Yeah, you know, opportunities come up, and uh, a lot of people say Europe is uh, where the people that are done and finished in uh, USA goes. But, uh, you know, I'm looking at it as an opportunity and something uh, new to do and, you know, looking to win a championship. David Huffman, the checkers, here for the semifinal round. Ferry going down. He'll have to go to the last chance qualifier. So we'll take a look at those five riders who will advance to the main event when we return. At a standstill, it might be compared to other sport bikes. At top end, it might be compared to other sport bikes. But at each and every mile per hour in between, Comparisons become insignificant specs in the mirrors. The TL-1000R, the only one of its kind on the track, from Suzuki. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift, too, so call now. The turf scoring sensation, Steve Francis. The Tigers gun and guard, Terrell McIntyre. ACC Powers mix it up in the backcourt. Maryland Clemson, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN2. Welcome back to San Diego. Tim Ferry, number 20. Involved in the crash that'll send him to the LCQ, the last chance qualifier, David Bailey. Now you see right here, his front wheel clips the top of that jump. The back wheel is going to come along. If you roll that forward, you'll see a case. You hear the term case it. The bottom of the bike lands right on there and just knocked the whole back end right off from underneath him. And Pichon did a really good job to react and keep from getting collected up in that. That bounced him out of the top five. Those who get the transfer to the main event, those making it, Huffman, Ward, Pashone, LaRocco, and Phil Lawrence, a privateer. Let's go down to Davey Coombs. Well, Damon, a much easier route to the main event tonight. Last week, you had to go to the LCQ. You made the very last spot, but tonight, at least you won the semi. Yeah, yeah, I really, I struggled a little bit in the first seat race, but uh, this race, I, you know, got a great start. Uh, my Kawasaki's working really good, and it put me out front, and uh, I'm looking forward to the main event, and I'm feeling really good. You finished 10th last week. Do you think you can do twice as good as that? Can you get on the podium? What are you going to do? Well, for sure, I'm going to have a better starting position. But, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I really raced. You know, I've been off forever. But um, I think I do a lot better than 10th. I'm looking forward to a podium or even first. All right, one last question. What do you think about your new teammate, Ricky Carmichael's sudden rise to the top of the 250 class? Does that have you worried at all? Well, it, it wasn't a real surprise. I mean, he's been riding really fast in practice. and But uh, I don't know. I need to get out there in front of him in the main event, though, and, uh, you know, don't want the rookie to take all the glory. Getting set now for our second semifinal round. Sebastian Tortelli, there you see Jeff Emig out of Riverside, California. Trying to get out of his funk here in the early going. Steve Lampson of Team Chaparral, David Villeman. Also in the lineup, there's Lampson, number 24. Jason McCormick, Brock Sellards. Trying to make it to the main, along with Pedro Gonzalez, Grayson Goodman, and Arena Crosser. And Doug Dubach. There's Tortelli, number 44. Lined up just to the inside. Look how much space. There's hardly any space between those guys' grips. Just about set to go. Now the board is sideways. The gate will be dropping for a second semifinal round from San Diego. Amig number 11, the point man, holds on to the hole shot. To the inside is Lampson. Pippity hops by. What a move by Steve Lampson. Pedro Gonzalez in second place with Emig in third and David Villeman in fourth. Well, Emig had a great start, drifting a little bit wide. It still looked like he could have kept the hole shot, but he was real careful through that hole straightaway and dropped all the way to third. These days, this much talent, you just you have to go out there and be aggressive the whole time or you're going to get passed. Linkstad is in fifth position. 
But out in front, you see him right there with a good move, Steve Lampson. Lampson felt he had a good ride in the opener, but he just got caught with a poor start. Got too much air on the rollers on the start at Anaheim and got caught at mid-pack and couldn't really break loose. Now, I have a feeling that anybody that hangs around Jeremy McGrath is going to get better. And that's a, not too bad of a start for Steve. I don't think there's a lot of people really expecting him to do that much at the first race. And finished up in the top ten, leading this. Behind Lampson and Pedro Gonzalez is Jeff Emig, number 11, and number 934, David Villeman. You're seeing Lampson on the screen right now. Jerry Campbell. Longtime uh, mechanic for Jeff Batasevich. Now working with Lammy. This is a good battle. Emig getting through the whoops. Just blitzing across him. Bulldogging it through there. And right behind him, Villeman was timing him, bouncing up and down, jumping four and five at a time. Another thing that might have hampered uh, Steve's performance in that opening round at Anaheim was the fact that he crashed in practice and got a big welt underneath the chin. They had to put some stitches in it. I'm sure that didn't feel too sharp, especially uh, doing it on a press day on a Thursday. You know, through my entire career, Art, it just seemed like there was probably only about four days out of nine years that I didn't have something wrong with me. So a bruised ankle or sore on my hands, blisters or sprained this or that. These guys take a pounding out there. It's amazing that they're able to most of the time stay healthy through the whole season, especially with the design of the tracks these days. There's so many obstacles out there for them to negotiate. Well, Lampson hasn't had a great deal of luck here in San Diego. This is one of his finest performances. Last year, he was coming off an injury where he missed the first four races of the season and took a 16 in the main event. And in the last race before then, 96, he placed in eight in the main event. Here's Emmy and Villeman. See Tortelli just creeping into the picture behind him. Oh, and he's a little mistake there. Good save. But uh, mechanic for Jeff Emig. Jeremy Albrecht really trying to get Jeff fired up, saying, go, waving his arm. Get with it, or else you're going to get passed again because Villeman's all over him right now. Qualifying, winding down for tonight's San Diego Supercross, and we'll be back in a moment. the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. The big V-twin makes your blood race. You grew up on the pegs of a dirt bike. You could smell a carb running rich from a mile away. Call 1-800-994-3664 to find out how you can become one of the best technicians in the world. Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. Suffering from the I've had it with the everyday life blues? We got a full tank of gas, three bottles of suntan lotion, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it! Then it's time you escape to Daytona Beach. There's 23 miles of sunny shores, as well as Daytona USA. Golf, fishing, plus Central Florida's top attractions are all within an hour's drive. To find out more about all there is to see and do at Daytona Beach, call for a free visitor's guide. Daytona Beach, big beach, big fun. Prepare for the final destruction of the kingdom as Supercross wrecks havoc January 30th. Get tickets to Ticketmaster, the box office, or charge at 206 628 0888. Then get ready, Anaheim, as Supercross returns for the last California appearance at Edison Field February 6th. Tickets at Ticketmaster, the box office, or charge at 719 740 2000. So check out PaySupercross.com for ticket and schedule information. And now tune in for a live Supercross webcast during each race. Welcome back to Supercross from San Diego. Our second semifinal round as you see Jeff Emig, number 11, being chased by 934 David Villeman. Villeman in the States for about five races before reporting back to the GP circuit where Rhino Hughes is going to go. They'll be competing against each other. That'll be good. 
Both those guys pretty aggressive. There's going to be some bumping. Pedro Gonzalez, number 53. He's with Kawasaki of Mexico. But our leader still, Steve Lampson on the Chaparral Yamaha. Emig is in second. Villeman third. Gonzalez fourth. And moving into the final transfer position out of the semifinal round is Sebastian Tortelli, number 44. And he will not have much opposition, I don't believe, from Brock Sellers. Jeff Emig starting to pick it up a little bit. Looking a little better, more relaxed. Anytime it's, this is so mental out here. And things start to go a little bit better. If, if a guy goes down in front of you, move up a spot, all of a sudden you get a look at the leader, and you're closing a little bit of time, you feel so good. He's on the white flag lap now. Last lap of our second semifinal. Starting to jump things a little bit better. His timing is better. Looked like he was looking down to the left side of his bike when he came around that corner. Yeah, it's hard to say. We'll keep an eye on him, see if he does it again. But I would imagine that Lampson at this point is just playing it safe, probably backed it off just a notch, and that's allowed these guys to close the gap a touch. Well, the guy that's got to feel good right now is Pedro Gonzalez in fourth position. This is his finest ride in some time. Tortelli is fading, and Brock Sellers now is trying to make a move on the final lap for the final qualifying position. Sellers, a 125 rider from the east, would love to go right to the main event and not go to the LCQ. The checkers are waving. Steve Lampson. What an energizer type of situation for Lammy. And Jeff Emig in second place. Villeman in third. So Davey Combs will be talking with Steve Lampson about this adventure here in our semifinal round when we return. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and our most powerful engine ever, the Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Available at Loudon Motorsports in Leesburg, Loudon's only motorcycle dealership. Come on, get away. It's time for a little Lansdowne. Lansdowne Resort, less than an hour from D.C. Come on, get away. It's time for a little Lansdowne. It's time for a little Lansdowne. Play golf and tennis, swim, sun, and more. Call for information. Get you ready for this year's Super Bowl like ESPN. And starting January 25th, catch Classic Super Bowl Week on ESPN Classic. Just call 1-800-CLASSIC to get a week-long look at the teams and heroes that made Super Bowl history. The Jets, Namath, Maynard, the Dolphins, Greasy, Zonka, the Cowboys, Aikman, Smith, the 49ers, Montana, Rice. Call 1-800-CLASSIC and get ready for the Super Bowl. Classic Super Bowl Week starts January 25th only on ESPN Classic. Hey Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. Back in San Diego, California, the East Five Riders coming out of this second semifinal round, advancing to the main event tonight, Steve Lampson. What a victory for Steve. Jeff Emig in second, Villeman third, Gonzalez fourth, and Sebastian Tortelli rounding out those five. Let's go down uh, trackside with Davey Combs. Well, Steve, this is the first time we've gotten to talk to you on a podium in a long time in Supercross. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks a lot. I just, uh, you know, the, the heat race, I didn't ride too good. I was a little tight, had a few problems, but I put it together in the, main, in the semi here and, uh, you know, came out winning it, so. How do you feel being teammates with Jeremy McGrath again? When you guys were on Honda, you're almost unstoppable. Yeah, it's really good. Um, you know, we're, we're working really good together, and uh, we're, you know, feeding off each other a lot. Like, just as I said earlier, we... Uh, Watch the, watch the videos from the heat races, and uh, he kind of had a few comments that helped me out a lot, so it's good. All right, well, we ask you and your teammate good luck in the main event. Thank you very much. Thanks. Our last two qualifiers for the 250 main event, Tim Ferry and Grayson Goodman. Coming out of the last chance qualifier, they get those final two gate positions. The 125 riders are on the track right now for their parade lap. 
We'll have the future stars of the 125s coming up after these words. Suzuki Fest 99, folks, step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki sport bike and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, son, a Suzuki Katana 600 and a helmet? Or maybe a Bandit 1200 and a new leather jacket? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, hey, no need to get nasty. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm. Call now and learn how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and apply for a patent. Even if your idea is just to improve an existing product, call for ISC's free information. For your inventor's information, call toll-free 1-800-652-0101. Sterling Sharp, Chris Mortensen, Dan Patrick, Tom Jackson, Chris Berman, Mark Malone, Joe Theismann, Jim Kelly, Stuart Scott. That's our Super Bowl team. What's yours? Nobody covers the big game like ESPN. Catch a week's worth of complete coverage on ESPN. ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, ESPN Radio, and ESPN.com right up to the kickoff. And then complete analysis after the game. This Super Bowl team can't be beat. Race Supercross, brought to you by Toyota Trucks, with you for the long haul. Welcome back to San Diego as we take a look at last week's winner, Casey Johnson, number 16. And let's take a look at the Suzuki point standings now as we go into our second round of 125 action. It's Johnson. Casey Lytle, his teammate, taking a second place in that opening round. Michael Brandis in third, Snell in fourth, and Coyote in fifth. Here's an interesting story. The AMA has changed the eligibility, allowing this year GP Motocross World Champions to ride in the 125 ranks. And that opened the gate for Alessio Coyote, number 109. Ma probabile, anche la mia intenzione, penso negli anni futuri, di... mi piacerebbe venire a correre in America. Um, yes, he likes it very much over here and he would like to possibly in the future, in the near future. Uh, he's going to continue with this year with the 125cc championship, but he's uh, interested in coming over here and racing Supercross in America. Casey Johnson, David Bailey proved in his qualifying round that uh, he's up to speed. It was well, no fluke that opening week. Yes, it was a struggle for him to get to the main event at Anaheim. He really had to work for it. He had to work hard in the main event, too. So he's got the confidence and knows he can come from behind. Feels like he's got the mental edge, but... Uh, Bogart looked pretty good in his heat race, and his teammate right here, Casey Johnson's teammate, Casey Lytle, also looks really strong, and it's going to be a tough fight. No well, mistakes for The him. way Johnson won that opening round, it really upped his confidence as we talked with him before the race. Yeah, I mean, uh, now I feel a lot more confident coming into this race, and uh, had the jitters going into the first race, you know, and then there's going to be a lot of tough people and uh, a lot of people going fast, so... But, I mean, I just relaxed and uh, rode my own race, and everything worked out good. Casey Lytle is a little bit more quiet than Casey Johnson, his teammate. Well, Johnson shows up in an NSX parked out by the Yamaha. <laughs> I mean, he shows up in style, that's for sure. He's doing the Hollywood scene, but in a way, I think that's good. He puts a lot of pressure on himself to go out there and perform and sort of prove that he's worthy of all that. As we're getting set for the 125 main event, it's not only Casey Johnson and Bogard, but also David Pingree, Casey Lytle, and there's Coyote, Viejo, Upton, Rusty Holland, Nathan Ramsey making the main event, Jimmy Varis, Ryan Clark, Keith Johnson, Scott Sheik, Greg Schnell, Preston Hagseth, Billy Payne, Reed Evans, Michael Brandes had a tough time in trying to qualify. And there's Pingree number 60. Right next to the starter box. It's always a nice place to be because then when you come out over the gate immediately, you've got about a six foot gap to the next rider. Board is sideways. Five to 10 seconds. That gate will drop and we'll get the main event for the 125s in San Diego underway. What a battle of a pack out of that first turn. 
Number 33, Casey Lytle. He got the good start in the opener. 16, Casey Johnson right behind him. Eric Viejo, number 98 in third. And Charles Bogard in fourth place, number 144. But it's Casey Lytle. Yamaha of Troy, number 33, is our leader. Looking good for these guys right off the bat. Once again, this time I'm anxious to see if Casey Lytle is satisfied with second place. He was happy with that at Anaheim because that was a fine performance, but I think he's feeling like, okay, I led uh, 14 laps last time. Let's make it 15 this time. Led the first 14 laps, and the only lap that Casey Johnson led throughout the entire 125 round one in Anaheim was the final and decisive lap. It's Casey Johnson right behind Lytle. It'll be interesting to see how these teammates work it. Will Casey Lytle want to hold on to that number one position so badly that he'll try to outposition Casey Johnson? I haven't seen Casey Lytle ride that much up front. It's hard to say what he's going to do. Obviously, he's got a lot more confidence. Already got a lap in the books. He doesn't have that much pressure yet from his teammate. He's there, but he's not really hounding him, forcing him to take the inside into every corner. And for the pro circuit guys, I know Mitch Payton really wanted to work on starts all week. Come on, guys, you Boom. need to get starts. Lytle oh. having trouble in the ropes, and Casey Johnson takes over. So a bad break by Lytle. Those are monster whoops. Well, he wasn't putting that much pressure on him, but he was close enough to take advantage of a mistake. And going back to Mitch Payton's riders, all of them got terrible starts. Scott and Sheik is in best position in that team, and he's back in about eighth, ninth place right now. One of the big surprises right now in the early going is third place, Eric Viejo. Kawasaki of Mexico as we take a look at our leader, number 16, Casey Johnson. Taking another look now of what happened to Casey Lytle in the whoops. Well, he got offline right there, and you see his front wheel touches that whoop. That's about a two-foot high straight wall. And as soon as your front wheel hits that, he almost comes to a complete stop. He did a great job to save it, keep his composure, and he's still pretty close to Casey Johnson right now. It's always hard to rebound from a big mistake like that. It takes a lot of energy. He and messed once up again. again. He's having trouble in that whoop section. Here comes Viejo. Viejo number 98 on the Kawasaki. Bogart is behind him in fourth position. Hey, look at that whoop section. It starts to get a rut down the middle, and you think, well, now it's easy. But it's pretty difficult to stay in that rut. It takes incredible balance to ride 70 yards in a perfectly straight line and negotiate all those bumps. That's what he's having trouble doing. So it's Johnson now pulling a lead on Lytle. The battle is for third with Bogart pulling up on Viejo. I guess Bogart loves this track or something. He's really looking sharp here in San Diego. And really making a move up through the rest of the pack. Quite a ways in back of the top four is Nathan Ramsey. He's in a battle for fifth. And right in front of him in fourth is Coyote. So that's turning out to be a good battle behind the lead pack, which is pretty much of a freight train. Viejo trying to hold off Bogard. Bogard just missed him. And you saw it right there on the camera. Great shot. Bogard just couldn't control. There goes Coyote. That was actually uh, a good idea, maybe a bad spot to do it. He had a much better opportunity in the corner before the whoops to go in there and get aggressive like that. A little over anxious. Take another look. Watch right here. He's just going to shoot to the inside. Good idea. But Viejo gets a stronger drive out of the corner than he thought. Makes contact right there in high sides. Now he's probably going, boy, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Looked a little impatient, didn't he? Yep. Tried to, to reach out when he really couldn't have a chance at it. Here's Nathan Ramsey, number 25, on the split fire pro circuit on the outside of Coyote. Coyote. Just coming to America to try to learn things from the American rider and take it back and defend his 125 world crown. Ramsey didn't get a good start at all. You heard me talk about the pro circuit riders getting bad starts. Sheik was actually in the best position, so Ramsey has come from behind past his teammate. And he's got a good enough pace right now that we could see him ch challenge Lytle towards the end of this race. Coyote, 109. Ramsey, 25. Ramsey at a third place in San Diego last year after qualifying ninth in Anaheim in the opening round this season and ending up in an 18th position. So this is really a comeback ride for Ramsey, hoping to catch up with number 109 on the Husqvarna. 
They call him Kiko. That's his nickname. Alessio Coyote. Pretty impressed. I mean, this guy really specializes in outdoor type races, but comes over here and mixing it up with the U.S. guys, no problem. And I like the line that that case uh, that uh, Nathan Coyote. Ramsey yes. rather is taking. He's not going for that rut. He's just decided. He doesn't have to worry about trying to hold a straight line. Just get through there quick. The top three are spread out. Neither challenging each other. This is the battle. The battle for four. Ramsey puts on the brakes just in time. Coyote trying to hold him off. Ramsey's going to have to get creative here. Maybe a little bit of extra aggressive to get by. Coyote knows he's there, obviously. That's an awesome sight. These guys are flying 25 feet high, 70 feet down the racetrack. And oh, here comes Ramsey, goes to the outside, but Coyote had the, had the smart line, David Bailey. Ramsey coming back, bar to bar as they go over to the jump. Uh, Coyote's running a smart race. Boy, he just fooled Ramsey completely. He knew exactly what Ramsey was thinking, just put on the brakes and parked it right there. There's nothing Ramsey could do about it. That's what's so great about Supercross here with the 125 main event from San Diego is you might have the leaders out in front and spaced out, but you got battles throughout the race. Sometimes you get stuck behind a guy like this. You feel like you're a little bit faster in spots on the racetrack, but you get stuck in the groove. You can't make a pass stick, and it costs you the race. Our leader, Johnson, has a seven-second lead on Casey Lytle, and here is the battle for Floyd. Wheel to wheel as Coyote just edges out in front in the corner. He, he just seems to have eyes in the back of his head. Already knew exactly, again, what Ramsey was thinking through there. But check this out. Uh, Ramsey Slips needed to be, again. He needed to come in there a little bit more authority than that. Just try to make that pass stick. I think he's a little bit shy because every time he gets up next to Coyote, he just moves completely across the racetrack. He doesn't want to get taken out the way that uh, we saw a moment ago. So at the halfway point of our 125 main event, it's Casey Johnson way out in front, and we'll be back to see if he can nail down his second straight 125 victory in a moment. A crowd of two-wheeled enthusiasts gathers at the Honda factory in Marysville, Ohio. Today, we are proud to introduce to you the Honda Shadow Aero. The bike's a real hit with the crowd. The Aero sports the latest in streamlined design with an exhaust pipe right out of the pages of science fiction. Here's Miss Aero showing off the bike's dazzling colors. The Honda Aero is available today, and what's the verdict in Marysville? There you have it, and it's full speed ahead for the bike of tomorrow. Out here, you don't worry about running out of gas. You worry about running out of dirt. A great tradition reborn on ESPN2, Friday Night Fights. This week live from Foxwoods Casino, Rosenblatt takes on Davis Plus. Part four of the Mike Tyson retrospective, Friday Night Fights, Friday at nine on ESPN2. Welcome back to Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, the home of the Padres Chargers, and now Pace Supercross. 125 action. Casey Johnson is the leader here for the 125 main event, but the battle for fourth is continuous. 109. Coyote out of Italy. The 125 FIM GP Motocross World Champion. Holding off Nathan Ramsey a Pro Circuit. And part of what's hard about figuring out what, how to get around Chiodi for Ramsey is the fact that he's from Europe. They haven't had a chance to race against each other very much, but after this race, we'll certainly know what to expect. It looks like it's going to stick right there. Ramsey making the move into fourth. Well, now Chiodi can learn a lot. Here's our leader, and the Honda stopwatch is out as Casey Johnson goes flying through the roofs. And you get a pretty good idea of the, the lead he's got over his teammate Lytle, who's starting to get some pressure now from Viejo. And look at Ramsey. Pulled away from Chiodi a little bit, but Chiodi's hanging on. That whole group is tightened up. So we may see real good competition going into the 
final few laps here. Four laps to go. Less than four laps to go. And it's a walk in the park for number 16, Casey Johnson. Casey's mechanic, Dave Finney. Boy, has he worked hard on that bike. Casey doesn't even look like he's working hard at all. Just making this look easy over the triple on the far side. Coming around. Enter in the whoop section. He goes right down the middle. It's a little fishtail side to side. He doesn't have to go through there that aggressive. With this kind of a lead, he can afford to back it down just a little bit. Make sure he gets everything done smooth. Now we've got a three-way battle for second place. Number 33, Casey Lytle, currently holding down the position. But look out behind him. Viejo loses a spot, then regains it from Nathan Ramsey. Oh, that's a good battle. You know, not only did we anticipate Yamaha of Troy, number 33, a rider from that team, and also Pro Circuit to battle it out, but FMF, and they've had all kinds of hard luck here in the early going, as Nathan Ramsey just pounding now Viejo for the third place position. He's got a line up his sleeve after this triple. He's going to square this corner and run down the inside. That's what he's been doing. Inside, three laps to go, and the battle continues. Decides to go wide that time. This is uh, Viejo's strongest race of his young career. And they're both right on within striking distance of Lytle. Almost scraping right there in the corner. Two laps to go in our 125 main second round action. Well, yeah, when I look at Ramsey's position right here, he's got so much to gain. He can go from fourth to second here right to the very end of the race if he makes good decisions. Viejo trying to put the block pass on Lytle, and Lytle just got by. Here comes Ramsey on Viejo. Has to go to the outside, though. Coyote is behind this bunch. A lot of pressure on Lytle right now. One mistake, and he's going to drop three positions. Now Coyote's turning up the screws. Theo just can't quite it, can't get quite the stick, and Viejo goes down in the whoops. Bad break for the young Mexican. He gave it all he had. He certainly did. If Wait. you're going to make a mistake, you want to make it trying as hard as you can, not some stupid mistake. White flag is out. Casey Johnson way past the finish line jump. And Lytle is holding on desperately. Nathan Ramsey barking at the door with Coyote ready if anybody makes a mistake in front of him. FMF riders Chris Gassler broke both heels in practice. That's why he's not here. He won't be back till maybe right at the end of the season. Here's Nathan Ramsey trying to put the pressure on number 33, Casey Lytle. Well, he could really put a dent in the confidence and this uh, Yamaha of Troy team going one, two, two weeks in a row. If they can get that done, boy, they're just going to roll through this series. Our leaders and his mechanic with smiles on the mechanic's face. The checkers for Casey Johnson. Two for two. Here's the battle for second place. Casey Lytle once again. The same order on the podium for the first and second positions, but Nathan Ramsey has nailed down his first podium of the year. Fine ride by Nathan Ramsey. He had to come from pretty far behind, work at it, and had a tough time getting around Coyote. And he, he made a last-ditch effort in that last corner to try to get around Casey Lytle, but I think that would have been a, a pretty sour T-bone if he would have really went through with it in the corner before the finish. Johnson finally putting his hands up there. He's got the taillight blinking away. We'll be right back as Davey Combs will be talking with Casey Johnson after these words. completely restyled the Katana 600 and 750 from their dual halogen headlights to their four into one stainless steel exhausts. Same time tomorrow? Yeah. So now they're just as impressive on the outside as they've always been on the inside. 
Here's how you can more than double your current life insurance coverage without paying one penny more than you are now. Call Best Quote. We'll prepare a free rate comparison of five top-rated term life policies that meet your specific needs. Here's a sampling of the huge savings Best Quote has recently uncovered. If that's less than you're currently paying, call Best Quote today for your free rate comparison. There's no obligations and no hassles. Simply the best insurance at the best rates from Best Quote. No salesperson will ever call you. Hey. I never want to see you again. Wait, where are you going? Aren't you bummed? She took my favorite jersey. Do you need a Visa credit card? If you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. This is a special opportunity to get an unsecured Visa credit card with no security deposit required, even if you've been turned on before and regardless of your past credit history. Almost everyone will be approved for this Visa credit card, so call now. Repeat, if you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. Say yes to this limited no-risk offer for an unsecured Visa credit card from Cross Country Bank. Call this toll-free number now. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davy Coombs. Our 125 main event has just concluded. Casey Johnson once again, his second win in a row. And for the second week in a row, Casey Lytle in second. But it was Ramsey in third, Coyote in fourth, Brandis in fifth. And as we take a look at six through ten, let's go down to Davy Coombs now and see how Mr. Johnson's feeling, Davy. I tell you, Casey, you're impressing a lot of people. We saw you roll in here today with the Acura NSX. You already look like a rock star, but you got two wins in a row, man. And those are real numbers. I'm not trying to have that rock star image, you know. I'm just uh, got a nice vehicle and I want to drive it around, you know. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe psych out the competition a little bit. I don't think it's working, but I mean, everyone's riding real good this year, and uh, it's two in a row. Hopefully, you know, uh, I can just keep it going. A much easier path to the win tonight. You didn't have the problems yet early in Anaheim tonight. A solid race from start to finish. Yeah, things went really well for me tonight. Um, I got off to a good start in my heat race, which gave me some good confidence for the main and. Uh, you know, there's no better way to finish one and two tonight with me and Casey Lytle up here. Hi, right, and speaking of Casey Lytle, Casey, another great start. You rode a solid race, but man, you were getting all kinds of heat from Eric Vallejo and also from Nathan Ramsey. Yeah, both those guys are riding really well. You know, I, I bobbled the beginning a little bit, kind of knocked me off the pace a little bit, had to recover and uh, and just ride ride the best I could for the rest of the moto. Well, the mood's got to be good in the Yamaha Troy camp. Yeah, you know what, Yamaha uh, Yamaha Troy racing, uh, they, they do a really great job with our bikes. You know, as you can see, one, two for the first two rounds. Uh, uh, how much better can we possibly do? Well, I'll tell you what, we look forward to seeing more of you and the other Casey up here. Congratulations, both guys. All right, thanks a lot. Davey, as we look at the top five, uh, Suzuki point standings right now, Casey Johnson with a six-point lead on his teammate, and Brandis with 36 points. Coyote, too bad he can't stick around for the entire season, would have had 34 points and uh, really pressing them as far as uh, the championship race is concerned. The 125 celebration continues on the podium now. Can the Red Rider revolution be interrupted by this guy, Jeremy McGrath? I've never seen him more hungry for a victory, even though he did yawn under that moment. We'll be right back as the big guys are going to compete now. The 250s are coming up next. Hi, I'm Marlon Black, Virgin Montine's bouncing baby boy. Oh. Chuck, shut this off for me, please. And their famous artwork. See? <laughs> Y'all come on by. Okay, I'm got it. I'm getting it. So why don't you bring your masterpiece on down? Let us spice a little sweet water on it. Make it feel good. Sweet water splash. Always your neighbor-friendly car wash. To many people, all plumbers look pretty much the same. But all is not as it seems. You see, at My Plumber, we do things that others don't, like guarantee that we'll be there the same day you call us. We work at one low rate. There's never any overtime charged. And we work better, cleaner, and faster than anyone else. You've seen us around. Give us a call. Not every plumber is the same. Find out about the difference that is My Plumber. My girlfriend made me go to Cancun. I could not watch NHL tonight.
When I got back, my knowledge was smaller. I hate Cancun. A capacity crowd here at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego as we're getting set for our 250 main event. Ricky Carmichael, so impressive in his heat performances, David Bailey. I think that was very significant in his young 250 career to go out there and have the winningest rider of all time, McGrath, actually catch right up to him and then didn't even seem phased by it. He actually pulled away a little bit. And again, like I said, it could have been by design on Jeremy's part not to tip his hand. Let's check in with Davey Coombs trackside. You know, the Yamaha Troy people have just got done celebrating their second straight sweep. But I got to tell you, down here on the field, it doesn't feel like it's going to work out the same for Honda. You're right, McGrath and Carmichael are flying right now. I see Ezra up there, and I see a couple other bikes with them. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings after that first round, it is Lusk with the three-point lead over his teammate, Mikel Pichon. Factory connection, Honda of LaRocco in third, the Honda of Wyndham in fourth, and we finally get to a non-Honda rider in the point standings with John Dowd. RC is not that far behind. Ricky Carmichael in sixth, McGrath seventh, Emig, Lampson, and Huffman are rounding out the top ten in our Suzuki point standings. Taking a look as they mount up into that gate. McGrath right up next to the starter box. And as I pointed out earlier, as soon as you come out over the gate, sometimes if you get a little bit offline, you run into the guy next to you. But with that buffer over to the next guy, you can afford to make a little mistake. Jeremy was disturbed with his opening performance. In fact, he was downright disgusted and mad when we talked with him about that race. I think it's very important for me to make a statement at San Diego this weekend. Um, Last week in Anaheim was a little bit of bad luck, kind of made me mad. In other words, pissed me off. And uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for this weekend. Ezra Lusk, of course, is coming off a very confident victory in the qualifying. You see him there on the right, Jeremy McGrath. He's got his game face on, as you can tell. Well, Ezra Lusk was calm, cool, and collected winning that opener. He claims he won't let anyone stand in his way. 32nd board is up. We got Jeff Emig lined up all the way to the inside. And I'm thinking Jeff is the kind of guy that can rebound in one night, put it all together. And what I've noticed is that everybody gets into that first turn hot and drifts wide. If Jeff gets a decent start, he can creep around the inside, get that lead he's accustomed to, maybe get back on track here. It's a possibility. Can LaRocco get a good start? Donnie Hansen has been working with him on his starts. And there's Emig, number 11. The board is sideways as we go down the back side of the starting gate. And our 250 main event from San Diego is underway. Raider once again getting good inside position. But out in front is the Frenchman David Villeman bar to bar with Robbie Raider. Villeman to the inside. Would this be a surprise? Villeman in his first 250 affair this year after battling the 125 East down to the wire with John Dowd last season. He wanted to advance rapidly, though, to the 250s, David. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be that surprised by Villeman getting off and upsetting. Albie going down. Albertine pinned underneath the bike there, having trouble getting up. Villeman is already starting to open up a pretty big lead out front over Raynard. Raynard could hold up traffic behind him, make it a little easier. Take a look at Albertine. See what happened here, David Bailey. Uh, looks like they got he got together with Lust. Lust went wide. Look at Larry Ward. He runs right over his leg right there. Albertine, you can see the mark right across the back of the seat of Albertine's bike. He's lucky he didn't get hurt, especially from his own teammate. But out front, though, Art, I, I'll tell you, Billiman has been looking super. I told people I thought I wouldn't be surprised if he won this thing. I got some weird looks, but look at him out front, pulling away. A three-second lead on Robbie Raynard, and we go four to five seconds. Emig is down. Uh, oh, that's Carmichael. That doesn't look good. Ricky Carmichael is down. He's holding his leg. I don't, that's a weird place to go down. He got crossed up and just face planted, it looks like, into the, that double jump there. And the riders are starting to come around now. David Villeman, our leader. Raynard pulling away in second place, and Ezra Lusk is in third place with Larry Ward in fourth. Villeman making a little mistake there. 
And that allows Rayner to get right back up on his tail. These two guys have just pulled away from the rest of the pack, but it's Lust back there in third. As they go through the yellow flag area, they try to protect Ricky Carmichael. It does not look good for Ricky right now. Villeman and Raynard. Raynard pulling up now on David Villeman on the backside. Raynard, evidently, his suspension's working right now. They went to their test bikes to bring the components and putting him into the race bikes. Here comes Raynard. He goes to the outside as Villeman holds on to our lead. You can see in that last shot, back to third place Lust. They got almost that entire whoop section lead on him. These guys can continue to pressure each other and stay relaxed in the process. Take a little bit longer for Lust to catch him if he can. Brainerd really pushing Villeman. Villeman's such a smooth, nice technique rider. Lusk in third. Ward still in fourth. It's Pichon now in fifth. And Jeremy McGrath is in sixth with Emig in seventh. And LaRocco in eighth. As they Lampson go, in ninth. As they go past that area again, Art, where Carmichael went down, he is up on his feet with a little bit of help. It's a shame. This is the, the a super whoop section, really giving the guys trouble in practice, but it's just unfortunate they got such a one-line situation through there. Otherwise, it'd be a great place to pass. Raynard having a little trouble with the whoops at the very end and lost a fraction of a, of a second to Villeman. Right, Villeman just beautiful into that corner. His transition from brakes back to the gas. There's, there's almost no pause at all. And here's another look at Carmichael. Check out, see what happened to Ricky here. Well, he's got stuck in that rut. Just tossed the bike completely sideways. He went all the way over the high side. Ooh. Might it be a wrist in her shoulder? Well, well we won't speculate until we can find out. And he's down there with the medical personnel right now. I'm talking to Chad Watts. Villeman flares out the rear end of his bike. Robbie Rayner, number 17, Team Suzuki. Villeman, five races before he goes back to France to compete for Yamaha France. Last year, of course, he did very well. These guys both still maintaining about the same distance over Lusk. He, Lusk may have inched up oh, just a little, but not gaining as fast as I, think, I thought he might. It was interesting that Villeman said, and there's Lampson. Lampson has gone down. That's in the whoop section, and he got collected in there with Jeff Emig. Jeff Emig over next to him as well. So this San Diego track is taking its prisoners. Rainer, though, hanging tough with Villeman. Villeman in the 250, despite still having lots of 125 eligibility left. His mechanic is his dad. Robbie Rayner used to have his father as a mechanic. And now with Team Suzuki, he's got Tony Berluti by his side. This is going to get interesting because what had just happened back there, McGrath has made a pass around Larry Ward. So he is going to join the party up front. Supercross from San Diego continues. One for return. Every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. This simple-looking device is the key to discovering your hidden potential. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. It's time to get the results you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure and discover the look you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. I'm on ESPN.com. What I like about it is you can read about like pretty much every sport. You know, what I really wasn't interested in until I got online was um, horse racing, and they had some stuff about you know the Breeders' Cup and the Kentucky Derby. I never thought about this, but you know, if I lost some weight, you know, got in better shape, I might be able to be a jockey. You know, there's my professional dream right there. I mean, you know, how hard can it be? You 
hop on a horse and hit it with a stick. You know? Welcome back to San Diego. As Villeman is out in front, we're taking a look at the defending champion, Jeremy McGrath. McGrath is currently in fifth spot and trying to chase down Mikel Pichon. McGrath just riding through the section right there where he made the pass the lap before on Larry Ward. They see Lust just inching up ever so slightly, but not gaining as much as he really needs to. I think later in the race, Lust is really confident in his training and his focus out there to stay concentrated. Your concentration has to be perfect for 20 laps, not 15. What a comeback ride for both these young riders. Villeman was 13th in Anaheim. He got into the main event barely with a fifth in the semifinal round. And of course, Raynard, as we told you before, after an impressive heat performance where he got a whole shot, he ended up 19th. One of only two riders being lapped in the opener. One thing about Villeman, too, is he's pretty solid. I don't, I don't recall seeing him get out front and make big mistakes. He gets out there and just gets in a groove. What I like about his style is it's a little bit unorthodox, but it, he knows he's in control. He's bringing that bike around the track with him. He puts a lot of extra style into it. He knows he's in control. He's having fun out there. He's staying loose. On the stopwatch, you get an idea as to the interval of these riders as Larry Ward goes through the picture. Mike LaRocco. Number 44, of course, is Tortelli, and this is his final, uh, finest finish if he should hold this position. Of the season, that is. Of course, he won the opener last year. That gap still staying the same, Art. Pichon still McGrath. holding off McGrath. McGrath looking for the avenue. Now he's within striking position of Pichon, if he can hold this. Here's a pass for the lead. Robbie Raynard and Villeman. Oh, my goodness, the crowd now is on their feet. Raynard almost skidded out. Well, now these guys start playing the slow race into the corner, trying to protect their lines and watch. Look what's happened. Ezra Lusk is right there. So. Ezra Lusk, the points leader. He won the opening round. Look at the mechanics, trying to encourage their riders. And to make it even better, just behind these guys, McGrath has made the pass on Pichon. So see, he just creeps into the picture. Jeremy McGrath in fourth, and he's not that far away from David Villeman. If, if I were McGrath, I would make sure that whatever Lust did, I followed. If Lust gets around these two guys, and McGrath takes too long getting around him, he's got win number two in the bank. 11 laps to go, and McGrath is five seconds behind the leader. Raynard, number 17 in second. Lusk. Looking for the opportunity, puts the block pass on, but Raynard slips through as they go into the whoops. This oh. is where the experience of McGrath may pay off. This is a great race. A wonderful track, actually. And here it goes. Look how much lower to the ground Lust stayed. That's what made, allowed him to make that pass. He had a good line up the inside, but he stayed about three feet lower in the air off that jump. And that jump was the halfway point now. Lusk in pursuit of Villeman as we see Raynard and Jeremy McGrath. McGrath, good position. Can he get the torque out of that corner? Raynard, oh, that 250 Suzuki program paid off at that time. Watch McGrath down this straightaway on the inside. This is where he passed Larry Ward. Triples into that. Raynard's doing the same thing and he's doing pretty close to the inside. So I don't think he's gonna have an opportunity right there. Okay, our leaders now are gonna start to get into the lappers. Jeremy McGrath makes the move on Raynard, and he's only got Lusk and Villeman in front of him. And you know what? You can hear that when you're out there. You can hear the crowd get into it. Lusk knows something just happened behind him, and I'm pretty sure he knows exactly what happened. Villeman, Lusk, McGrath, Raynard, Pichon. That is the top four. The top five. Great racing from San Diego. And this is only our second round. Villeman, can he hold off? A five-time winner, and then the greatest Supercross rider of all time. You're right about him not making very many mistakes, David Bailey, last year. But when it got close in his battle with Dowd, 
Dowd was able to take him once or twice. Boy, he just knew exactly what Lust was thinking there. It squared right back underneath him, and it paid off. Lust was patient at Anaheim, but now I don't think he can afford to be quite as a patient. He's got that big number one right behind him. Eight laps to go. McGrath closing in on number four, Lusk as well. There's one section on the racetrack that Villeman is making a mistake every lap, and they're approaching it. And if Lusk is close enough, he may be able to take right advantage on, yeah. again. Pichon has just passed Raynard for fourth. So another Honda moves up, and LaRocco is now behind Raynard. As That's we take a look at our leader in the lead change, Ezra Lusk, just as you predicted, David. Yep, he just is, doesn't have the right timing through there, and Lusk rode right around him. That's how Raynard passed him as well. Less than eight laps to go. Look at there. Another change. Villeman losing ground. Here comes Jeremy McGrath. Boy, Villeman did a nice job to get him back, but Lux just out horsepower him down the straightaway and had the inside. Pichon is only three seconds in back of the top three. We've got Lux, Villeman, McGrath, and Pichon. Villeman and McGrath going at it for a second. That was smart by Incredible. McGrath. He could have gone in there and bumped him, but he would have taken a chance of going down himself the way he did last week, so he just stayed tight, showed him a wheel, kept the pressure on. How are things looking down at trackside? Now as McGrath goes into second place, he becomes. I'll tell you what, there's 55,000 people in the stadium screaming. They're all screaming for Jeremy. His number one competitor is the last guy left in front of him. Guys, it's mayhem down here in the mechanics area. It turned into a big rivalry last year when Ezra Lusk put Jeremy McGrath down. He said, hey, that's racing. We've been waiting all off season to see these two go at it. Wheel to wheel. Now, can Jeremy catch up on Ezra Lusk? Lusk is looking confident. He's looking smooth. Villeman has moved back to third with Pichon in point. But it's number four, Ezra Lusk. In front of number one, Jeremy McGrath. Now it's really just a battle of who is faster. These guys have enough of a gap right now between themselves that they can just find out who's the fastest. If McGrath can close it, I think it's going to have to be an aggressive move, and this, they could carry this rivalry through the season. Wouldn't I, that be something? Yeah, I expected Jeremy to, to rebound after Anaheim. It's not surprising to see Lust back up front again, but these guys are going to have to bump each other to get around. A two-second lead right now for Ezra Lusk as they came over the finish line jump on Jeremy McGrath. Milliman still holding on to third. Oh, Ezra Lusk just picked up a half second. Let's go to Davey. Hey, guys, while the Ezra's starting to pull away a little bit, I want to bring you up today on a couple riders. Greg Albertine appears to be okay. He's walking around down the mechanics area. As for Ricky Carmichael, he took a huge gash out of his leg. It doesn't look like anything's broke, but the Kawasaki guys tell me he is cut. We'll see how that turns out after the race. Now, he's swung around weird, just got, like, corkscrewed into the ground. I think he may have caught the foot peg on the way down as that bike was laid on its side. That's unfortunate because he was definitely up front. If, if Carmichael was out there still, this would be a three-way battle. I'm sure of it. Ezra Lusk is command, in command. And there you see four laps to go as they go over the finish line jump. This is crunch time. Dig on the pit board. Randy Lawrence, Jeremy McGrath's mechanic. Jeremy McGrath trying to reach back. These guys are coming around to lap Jeff Emick, who went down with Lampson in the whoops earlier. A couple years ago, Emick winning the Supercross title, now a lap down, just about. That one, number four, our leader. That's the one section that if Villeman could have just gotten through there a little bit better, this would be a little bit different story. Ten podiums last year for Ezra Lusk. Jeremy McGrath trying to cut it down now. Less than four laps to go. That's a good signal by Randy. Keep the pressure on. If you don't have pressure, you can ride perfect all day. But as soon as somebody's right there, all of a sudden you start thinking about them, wondering if they're going to cut underneath you, if they've got something different, the crowd gets into it. You start riding a little bit different race. Jeremy's cut the lead down to a little bit more than a second, as you see there. So far, Lusk has been cool. 
Every time Jerry gains a little bit of time, Lust opens it back up. Second last year in the points race, Ezra Lusk. He's finished in the top three the last three years. McGrath's former mechanic, Skip Norfolk. Now in the corporate world. I wonder who he's rooting for. Well, I'm pretty sure that would be number one. <laughs> I think so, too. But right now, it's Ezra Lusk with less than three laps to go. This is an interesting section right here. Their lines completely cross. So if Jeremy can creep up, catch Lusk by surprise, get a better drive through that whoop section, drop to that inside, we can see a pass. That's the only place I see that Jeremy really has an opportunity. Everywhere else, Lusk is just too solid. It has been an outstanding ride for David Villeman, number 934, in third place. Behind him is Pashone, and we've got Larocco behind him. So four Hondas in the top six. Tortelli is also coming up. A lot of red up front. And Villeman has been pretty steady. Pretty hard to expect this kid that's only riding some of the 250 rounds his first year to get up there and hold off Lusk and McGrath, but you know, fine job. The battle for third is on. Pashon number five, trying to put pressure. Here's number three, cutting to the inside, Larocco. That's the line I was talking about that McGrath is using. He's going to the inside every time the same way as Larocco. White flag. Final lap. And Ezra Lusk hold on for his second consecutive victory. It won't be the first time in his career he's had back-to-back -back victories. He did that last year. They're approaching some lap traffic. It's Pedro Jeff Emming. Gonzalez. Pedro Gonzalez and Jeff Emming. Plus, how will he play it? The Kawasaki's are in front of him. Jeremy McGrath is behind him, making time. This Here's is his our last leaders. opportunity. Ezra Lusk. With the lappers in front of him. Does he pick the right line? McGrath tried to go inside. Lusk the checkers. McGrath a much improved second round. He's hanging in there points wise. And number three, LaRocco, a tremendous effort and terrific move to get a third place for the second time in a row. Jeff Stanton goes over to Ezra Lusk. Along with his, there's Mike LaRocco coming into view. The congratulations to Ezra, as it looks like he was holding his shoulder a bit there. Look at Randy Lawrence going over to Mike Gosler. The mechanics, just as competitive and just as much sportsmanship. I think they just enjoy the race. It'll be interesting to find out the condition of his shoulder and when that happened during the race, because it was flawless with the pressure of McGrath behind him. He had to dig deep for that one. Davy Coombs will certainly find out as he's making his way to the podium. Jeremy McGrath touring the course. Thousands of fans here came to see him, and he's going around to say thank you. We'll be right back to San Diego to hit the podium in just a moment. cruiser as comfortable as the Suzuki Intruder 1500 LC. A bike so smooth, so impressive, you'll want the end of the ride to be just the beginning. Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. It's NHL All-Star Saturday, where North America takes on the rest of the world in a test of speed, power, timing, and accuracy. The Get NHL Super Skills Competition plus the Heroes Get of Hockey on NHL All-Star Saturday, tonight at 7 on ESPN.
Pace Supercross has been brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. And by Honda, inventor of all-terrain vehicles. Honda, best on earth. We're back in San Diego after a wild and woolly 250 main event, David Bailey. So take another look at what happened. You see Ezra nursing his shoulder. Well, Albertine is clear up in the air, number eight. You see him as he's coming down. He comes down right on the edge of Ezra Lust's shoulder. Ezra Lust is actually going up to double these jumps into the corner. And you see right there, boom, contact on his shoulder. That's what causes Ezra Lust to go out and overshoot the corner. Albertine goes down. Larry Ward has nowhere to go but right over Albertine, his teammate. Tries to lift it up to wheelie over and had nowhere to go. Amazing as we take a look now at the top 10 results. Our Suzuki top 10 results. Ezra Lusk, his second win in a row. McGrath moving up to second place. LaRocco in third. Villeman in fourth. And Pashone in fifth. With Tortelli in sixth, the Honda Revolution continues with four of the top six positions. Let's go down now to Davy Coombs. Okay, thanks. I'm down here with Ezra Lusk. Ezra, first of all, congratulations. But, man, you don't look happy. Tell me what's wrong with your back. Oh, uh, well, I, uh, I guess one of the riders, I guess it was Albie, committed to the triple back in the back and I had cut it off to try to get by somebody and he landed right on my back. All I felt was tires and frames and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was in so much pain. I think RC passed me and I was just, I can't believe I, I finished the race. After that, you got back up. You had a very smart race. You had Jeremy McGrath coming up behind you. You had Billman and Raynard in front of you. You rode it safe. You rode it smart and you came out with a win. Yeah, you know, I got to thank Team Honda and uh, Dunlop and Edney Shoes and all these guys. Fox are really uh, putting effort in this year and uh, just making the bikes awesome. Hey, can we take a look at that back? Yeah, I think it's just uh, my shoulder blade up here is a little swollen. I don't know about too many scratches. Well, don't worry about it. I don't want I you to. can't even pull it up. You're going to have to pull it up if you want to see my back. Okay, well, while we're talking, let's sit around here and talk to the second place rider. Jeremy, I tell you what. You had a good race going, but that start killed you. Yeah, I kind of got, got closed out on the start. I had a little bit of a bad jump there. and we, My Yamaha is working great. It's just I'm getting a lot of traction, having trouble holding it down. And uh, I got kind of closed off. Up at the end, you moved your way up through the field. Again, it was a real methodical ride. Three laps to go. You had Lusk right in your sights, but it seemed like you just couldn't get close enough. Yeah, Ezra picked up the pace once I got in second, and he got in the lead. And then I, I got closed in on him, was kind of stayed the same for a while, and then tried to get close to the end. But, you know, I was kind of trying to be patient, too, because I need to get the ball rolling. Anaheim, I finished seventh. It wasn't that good. I need to get some confidence going in my head. And and uh, I was strong the 20 laps, right on his tail. And, uh, you know, he's got the confidence from last week, so I'm trying to build some. I'll be all right. I'm just starting to get going now. Maybe we'll see a rematch of your great race in Phoenix next week. Well, I hope so. That's kind of where it all started last year. And, and uh, you know, my Mazda Chaparral Yamaha is working great. And uh, hopefully I can be on top next week. Good job, champ. Thanks a lot. As we take a look at the uh, Suzuki point standings now, Ezra lost the perfect 50 points. LaRocco moving up past Pashone after his fine third place performance with 40 points. Pashone at 38. And Jeremy McGrath not that far behind David Bailey with 36. Like he said, playing it smart, trying to build some confidence, get some points on the board. Uh, you know, it's only three points difference right here tonight, and Lusk had the ball rolling, and Jeremy might have had to take some chances that could have cost him some points to try to take over the lead, so he played it smart. That's how he's won titles. Next week, from Phoenix, Arizona, it'll be Sunday the 31st at 4 p.m. Eastern time for round number three of Pace Supercross. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs. Happy you could join us for our Supercross action here on ESPN2. Call 1-800-348-4600. They're back, and so are we. The NBA tonight gets it all started Tuesday at midnight Eastern. Which team will rise to the top? We could depend on all those old faces and new places, and we'll bring you up to date. Join us again on Wednesday at 2 a.m. Eastern for team-by-team -team analysis of the Western Conference. Then again on Thursday for a preview of the wide-open Eastern Conference. We'll put your opening night thirst Friday with a full slate of highlights and analysis. So join me, Jason Jackson, Andre Aldridge, Fred Carter, and company for another great season of the NBA tonight, only on the news. 
and thanks for joining us for this special edition of ESPN News on ESPN2. My name is Michael Kim. If you'd like us to be available 24 hours a day, call your local cable operator, DirecTV, The Dish Network, or Prime Star. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network. Go.com. Jeremy McGrath leads wire to wire in Arizona and takes over the Supercross points lead. Just how expensive is it to go road racing these days? We'll tell you just how much it costs to be fast. And Destry rides again to victory in the AMA Heron Hound season opener in the.